question um, for you yeah. too. You pretty happy right now? Yeah, I, I've got on? a lot of joy in my heart. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Me too. Yeah, it's a lot of things yeah. kind of and. You know, and working. My helps. life is in complete disarray. It's, it, it is in disarray. Your life is always, it's in, always disarray. in disarray. It's always in disarray. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff, and I have had the privilege and honor to talk to a lot of great guests on this show since we started doing it, and um, I've had a bunch of friends on, and I I get to sit down with one of my close friends, Katie Sackoff. You might know her from Battlestar Galactica or Longmire or the Schmoes No Show, where she was our co-host for a long time. She has a brand new show coming out on Netflix. We talked about that. We talked about life in general. We talked about uh, how her and I met. We talked about um, just social media. Like, there's so much. We talked for like an hour and a half. It was a great conversation. We shot it in the podcast studio. I wanted to try something new here because I kind of like looking at people when I'm talking to them, even though like the, the, oh, the other studio, I'm just kind of from the side. This was face to face, but you don't need to hear me talk about it. Either watch it or, or rate it and comment on it and stick your earphones in your freaking ears and listen to the rest of it. Here it is. This episode of One on One is brought to you by Rode Microphones. Rode's proud to present My Rode Reel. It's the world's largest short film competition. This year, there's $1 million worth of prizes up for grabs. You make a three-minute video, short film in any genre that you like, a behind-the-scenes video showing a Rode product being used, and you could win big. Entries are open until July 31st. Head on over to MyRoadReel.com and get shooting. MyRoadReel.com. Now go watch One on One or listen to it. Do something. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff, and different studio today. And I kind of I'm glad to do this because I was telling uh, I was telling my guests and I was telling the crew here today that I like to just be able to talk to my guests and not kind of look awkwardly from a couch. And then honestly, another reason is too is it gets the publicists the hell out of the room. They don't want to be in this box. <laughs> and so um, I am now I'm joined by a very close friend, someone that I've been friends with for a long time. And if you are a Schmoes fan, you would know her. If you are a Battlestar Galactica fan, you know her. Longmire, so many different things that she's been on. Katie Sackhoff is here. Hello, Katie. Hi. How you been? Awesome. Yeah? Yeah. What's going on? I was just saying, you look very tan. <laughs> I know. It's funny because, and I was telling you, this is the first summer I've really been in Los Angeles. It's sort of, you know, during Longmire, we filmed in Santa Fe and it was always beautiful and it was summer, but mm. I, you know, wore as much sunscreen as possible and because it was, it would get burned. We'd be outside forever. Right. And, and, um, and then, you know, once July hit, I would always sort of like go to New Zealand and it'd be winter. So right. my, this is just like, I get really naturally dark even I know, when I, I wear sunscreen. Right. So it's sort of, just yeah. been laying out and stuff? Chilling no, out. I don't even lay out. Just this walking is, around, this, walking the dogs? This is me just like walking the dog. <laughs> really? I know, it's it's strange. Yeah. It's sort of, um, um, my mother's got really dark right. skin. So even when I wear sunscreen, I don't burn. I just get like darker and darker. Well, this is something I was, I mean, and again, for starting the show, we've had a lot of conversations over the years, but I wanted to, I think there's some stuff that the fans, well, I know that when I told them you're coming on, things that they wanted to know, but mm. also things in general that, Maybe I know or I don't know that we can just talk about in general, but and I'm sure you've talked about things in, on other shows. But let's try let's let's try to figure this out. Let's talk about you. <laughs> let's this try is, to figure talk, this let's out. Let's talk about you. <laughs> um, you you were born in Oregon, correct? I was. Okay. In a small, I was born in Portland, but I was raised in a small town called St. Helens. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Um, was growing up there, how long did you how long did you live there? Um, we moved away when I was about twelve or thirteen to okay. Portland, so a but good, a um. Good time. It was a great childhood. Yeah. I mean, you know, things were so different back then in, in so many cities, but especially small towns. I mean, you know, it, we had no McDonald's in one streetlight, and I right. would sort of disappear all day long, and, and my parents would try and find us later in the afternoon. And right. it was there just. There was no a, risk. There was no risk, yeah. you know. I mean, the risk that my parents worried about with us was falling out of trees, and, and you know, my knee got jabbed with barbed wire and yeah. things like that. How old were you when that happened? Oh God, I was six. Oh wow. Yeah, I was. You were six. getting into some shit when you were younger. Oh huh? yeah, no, yeah. it was um, on my sixth birthday. I wanted yeah. to climb over the barbed wire fence instead of under it, uh. and my brother used to pull it up for me. And the, of course, the first time I do it, my knee jabs right into a piece of barbed wire. Yeah, so. yeah I feel like you, 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 if through, it, it, probably until recently, you're always get, you're always hurting yourself. 
Yeah, I always get <laughs> always hurt yourself. I do. Yeah. But, you know, I, it's always little things. I've never really had anything so big. You know, I've right. got a bunch of little tiny things. But, like, like I've never broken and... a bone. Knock on wood. Right, knock on wood. I mean, I've had seven concussions, but, but I've never but see, you, you snap bone. out of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, right. um, I vaguely remember driving down the mountain in, in Mount Hood, throwing up in a big gulp cup, driving my dad's car down the mountain, just desperately trying to find a hospital because wow. I'd yeah. given myself such a massive concussion and... Sort of forgetting where I was. How old were you when that happened? 26. 26. 27. Okay. I am... Yeah, no, I'd gone up snowboarding by myself. My my ex had gotten me a new snowboard for Christmas, and I was really excited. And and, um, um, I went out and sort of was in the pipe, and this kid sort of was there and shouldn't have been, and I sort of pulled my board so I wouldn't hit him, and I slammed my head into the ice, and... I remember sort of laying there thinking, like, I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay. And then um, it was quite icy out. And so on the way down, when I came to a stop, my board sort of, like, you know, like, yeah. um, didn't come to a complete stop. It sort of just, like, bounced. Um, and it was just enough to, like, shake my head one more time. And, and I was like, I think I need to go. And, and by the time I was in the mountain or down the, the to the car, I was throwing up. Well, you caught it, and I mean, again, yeah. you've, like we said to start this, you fuck yourself up a lot. So I you, do, so I do. So the barbed wire happens when you're six. It you does. Were, yeah. So what kind of kid were you though? I mean, your your older sister, older sister who didn't live with us uh, growing up, uh-huh. uh, my dad's daughter, um, and um, my brother who was 17 months older than me, so really close in age. Right. Um, and we, our existence was just very. I was a very creative little kid. Yeah. Like I just sort of. I was always running around and like playing games and talking to myself and building forts and, you know, running into the woods. And I very distinctly, there's some memories that are so vivid. And one of them, I was eight and my brother and his friends wouldn't let me build a fort with them. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to do it myself. And so I went and got this cardboard box and my dad was a builder. So we always had wood lying around and I threw a bunch of wood in this box and hammers and nails and I'm dragging it through the woods and I stepped in a hornet's nest and I was covered in bees. And I remember thinking that it was stinging nettles and then going "Ah," and like sprinting to the back. And I remember my mom like stripping me on the back porch and spraying me with a hose. And I was, I mean, so many stings and bites. It was my little body was... They threw me in a bathtub with some, some, I think it was like baking powder right. or something. Yeah, I don't remember what they threw me in the tub with. But so, yeah. were you a tomboy? No, no. Um, yes, but uh, out of necessity. You right. know, you grew up in a, you grew up like, you know, when you're, uh, we didn't have a farm, but our, our, our property butted up to a bunch of farms, mm-hmm. and we would, you know, run in a field and find horses and right. these and that, and so it was, you sort of. You know, you you have to be a tomboy. Yeah. My parents would kick me out of the house in the summer and be like, "Stop playing with your Barbies, go!" So I would take my Barbies and like go play in the mud. Right. Um, and so I always had this sort of mix of both, I guess. Yeah. So because I mean, again, just today, I mean, you're you're very into sports. I mean, MMA. So, yeah. I mean, like these. I was explaining an arm bar to somebody on the way over amazing. here. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I remember. So like, there's a lot. That, did, was your dad and your mom, or were they into sports as well, like going, growing up, or, or not so much? Not so much. I mean, yeah. my mom was a runner. Yeah. Um, and my dad. Um, my dad wasn't like a sports guy. My my dad was athletic. He right. golfed and things like that. But um, he watched a lot of sports. Okay. Um, so there was always, you know, a basketball game right. or a football so that's, game that's or something. That's kind of where like the interest on. comes in for sure. Like, yeah. And then did you get along with your with your siblings? I did. For yeah. Well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. brother and I were always together. Yeah. Um, I think he slowly started kicking me out of the, the group when I was probably about 13 or 14. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the, who was the biggest uh, problem child out of the three of you guys? My brother. Your brother was. Yeah. <laughs> Still or, or not this much anymore. You know, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still. Okay. Yeah. No, but he. Yeah. It just you know it takes some people longer to find themselves. Hell yeah. That's all. Yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. But you. So when do you decide? At what point do you say I'm getting I'm getting out of Oregon? I'm gonna go do my thing. When do you discover that you wanna? Like you said, you're messing around. You're always creative, and you're. Yeah. But when is it like? No, no, no. I'm gonna do this. It was never an, a question of whether or not I would leave home. That okay. was you always knew you were going. Always knew that okay. I would leave. Um, when I was in high school, I, I had such a the pleasure of dating this guy for mm-hmm. for like th- 
I don't even know. In my mind now, it was four years. It was probably only like two. I have no idea. Right. Like time flies and you start adding time to things. Yeah. Um, Did you like high school? No. No? Why not? No. Um, I never felt like I fit in perfectly. Okay. Um, I felt like... Awkward um, or... No, I felt like it became very apparent to me from a very early time in high school that if you didn't make fun of people, you weren't popular. Oh, really? It was uh, kind of like a bully culture. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, yeah of course. I yeah. mean, you know, the popular girls were not necessarily the nice ones. I see, like and, mean, mean girl style. Yeah, 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 and I was sort of, I ran with that crew for a while. And by the time I was a sophomore, I was like, I don't want this yeah. life. I don't want this. And I sort of like excommunicated myself from those people and then ended up with very little friends for a, a long time. And you find um, the boyfriend. I found the boyfriend before okay. that. Oh, before that. Okay. Um, but then I found the theater people who uh-huh. sort of were like, come join us. Right. <laughs> we can sing and dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> Hello, right. my baby. Hello, right, my right, baby. Right, you know, right. like, sort of like, come over here. Um, and um, But no, so I, I had the pleasure of dating a hockey player okay. um, who was from uh, Canada but was lived with a billet family because he was playing with the Winterhawks, my age, um, a year older than me. And fell madly in love with this guy and and we both did and it was really intense but what i learned from him a i learned what love was a a healthy love was at a very young age which is awesome um but i also saw in somebody that was a peer a massive amount of success and i thought to myself oh my god like you've been drafted to go into the nhl so i can do whatever i want right if you can do it and you, I can and you do believed it. in and him. I be- right. Of course, right. 100%. Like, I mean, I, I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with this kid. Wow. Um, and um, this is about 16, 17 years old? Yeah, and wow. dated till about 18. And, yeah. and um, um, but he gave me the courage, whether he knew it or not, to try something that seemed so unattainable because he had attained something that was so difficult. Right. Um, and it just became a matter of like, is, if you work it really, really, really hard. You can do anything you want. Yeah. And so I wasn't scared to move to L.A. I was like, of course I'm going to make it as an actor. He right. did it. And the goals were – and you kind of had that installed in you already from just hearing your stories. But that was kind of the extra kind of kick in the ass. And yeah. then said, like, so you started putting the goals out there. Well, wh- what happened with the dude? How come – he goes off to hockey and it just didn't work out? He go, He went off to hockey. He yeah. met someone. Okay. Um, Is that what – oh, so the, it just – it ended bad? No, it didn't end badly. Okay. It didn't. It sort of – it ended the way all young relationships right. end. You know, I mean, I – I saw myself doing this um, yeah. for the rest of my life, and 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 he did podcasting with me. Yeah, right. absolutely. <laughs> and and he saw himself in a much um, simpler um, home life. I see. When um, when uh, his professional life was always so busy. Is he still? Is he back there now? Um, he's he's back there. He played. He's got a. He's he's. Uh, He's won some some um, what's it called the Stanley Cup? <laughs> oh, oh, wow! So he really yeah he went no on to have he's a great yeah career. phenomenal career. No, wow, Still married to that woman. They've got yeah kids yeah. and and really happy and, you guys talk? and um no every no. once in a while I mean every once in a while I'll get a text of like congrats on the movie or, yeah. or something like that but um no no I mean such different people than we were back then but but what a beautiful way to sort of start. A career and sort of yeah. be inspired by someone you know? and you do that and you get inspired you go out like you said you go to LA um, whether the the initial heartbreak is there or whatever it might be you get over it you go yeah. you go to LA um, and what happens when you get here like is it just a matter of like yeah like you said I'm gonna make it I'm gonna do it let's, yeah. let's go like who do you meet like do you know anyone when you get here yeah so um I had done a movie in Los An- in Portland mm. that got me my SAG card. Which one was that? It's called Fifteen and Pregnant. I know that. Movie. Everyone thought it was a documentary right, right, right. for so long. <laughs> and you thought, oh, really? Do you people people <laughs> thought did. you got knocked up? They at 15? did. Okay. They did. Listen, no judgment. No We're judgment condom. at all. <laughs> but, no judgment at all. Um, no. Yeah, no. It's um, it was a movie with Kirsten Dunst. Um, and it got me my oh. SAG card. How'd you get that? Just um, kind of come through the street. I went down to be. Uh, Kirsten's body double and I was too tall and like outweighed her by like 15 pounds okay. and they were like but can you act and I was like of course I can right. I was in Hello Dolly don't you know me and um, and so I went home I memorized the lines with my mom I went back auditioned got the part that was it 
that was it. Got my SAG card. The director from that movie convinced my mom to bring me to L.A. that I had something special. Mm. Um, she went down to L.A. with me. He introduced me to my agent, who's now my manager 20 years later. Look at that. Uh, and the, the hockey player that I dated. Um, uh, knew he had a sports agent down here that okay. he was signed with, and that agent sort of showed me and my mom around. Yeah. I had an apartment by the time I went back, and six months later, my mom drove me down and dropped me off. Wow! And you and your mom are really tight. Yeah, super tight. So yeah. And so, and your dad and you were pretty tight, right? Yeah. So more, my whole family is really tight. Right. But, yeah. you, but I just know you and your mom have a very special relationship. Yeah, I've so. talked to her like three times already. Today. Right. Right. Which, <laughs> uh, and then, so you get to you. She's cool with you. The family's cool with you being here. No, no not, not at all. No, 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 fights. no, no, no fights. No fights. Um, my parents raised a very headstrong daughter, yeah. and they knew that, and they knew part of the risk of that was that she was not going to stay home. Right. Um, and so they knew that if they didn't support me, that they would lose me because I was I would go anyway. Yeah. And so they did. They paid my rent um, for the first six months. They said, if you stay in community college, we'll pay your rent. Um, so I did, I signed up for community college. I was, um, my dad thought that within a year I'd be home. Yeah. Um, but within six months I had my own show Yeah. <laughs> and I would, moved would, and back, and back to was... Vancouver. That was the fearing mind. It was, um, I was, by the time I got that, I think I was nine. 19. Okay, so, so you're out here at 18, 19 years living on by yourself. I, was, I moved out here when I was 18, just 18. Okay. And then within six months, I had a show and was living up in Vancouver shooting a show for Fox wow. Family. Wow. Mm -hmm. Look at that. So you are, yeah. uh, again, that's, but that's also a lot of pressure to put on an 18 year old, too, because, I mean, a lot of responsibility coming mm -hmm. your way. And when you're 18, I mean, I was a maniac at 18. And yeah. I'm, so were you. Yeah. Um, we met not long after we, that. No, I, think, I think we left. <laughs> and and if, if you're cool with it, I'd actually like to get into how we met a little bit. Yeah. Because for sure. I think it's it's been. It's been so many years. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I get qu questions all the time, and and I think that we should just get it out of the way. Because, yeah. Um. So we met. We met. It was funny because I think I told you. I used to when I did stand up comedy, I used to do a joke on stage about how I canceled a date. Um. Because I wanted to watch Battlestar Galactica, and <laughs> yeah. that was that was true. By the mm -hmm. way, like that that poor girl, um, <laughs> she was she was cute, but she just <laughs> the show was good. <laughs> and I told you that, and yeah, I told you you, because we came you came in for a general um, meeting. It was Naveed and, when you worked at Silver. When I worked at Silver, mm -hmm. and and I remember when you came in, it was just like it was it was right at the height of Battlestar, and it was you know, yeah, you, and it was like I think there was a couple. It was. Right after you did the, thing, the, the boxing, it was the boxing episode. Yeah. And we talked about that for a bit. And you came in, though, and, like, first, let's talk about the general meetings in general. People don't know. you got to go around and meet fucking people you all do. the time. It's good for the it's good for the for the career. It's a lot like this general meetings. Like if you can get out of your own skin and you can like communicate and like if you're good at right. going if you're good at meeting people, a general meeting is a lot like this. Yes. You know, you if just sit there and talk. In certain ones too, because I've been on them too, and there's you're right. You yeah. can get into a good conversation and you'd be like, Well, that was cool. I'm glad that I did yeah. that. Who knows what's gonna happen? There's other times when the conversation goes well, nothing comes out of it, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. There's other times you're just like, Why am I in this room? This uh -huh. person's a terrible person. Yeah. Um, that happens. But we met, and it's funny because when we were we we hit it off. But mm -hmm. like I remember when, and I always I always I might as well ask you on on air. Um, I was always confused because when you're when when you walk in, you see you, say, you have a conversation with someone, and I was like, I thought I was. I'm like, I think something might have been there. I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm, and I guess I was. Like, you know, again, I'm between you and I, then I'm 26 years old. You I know? don't know how and old I was. Then. I am I, at that point. No, you know what? That's not true. I was 24. I'm, 20, I'm 20, 23. Yeah, whatever it might have been. Yeah. And then, so and then I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm. I'm just. I'm imagining it. And I guess then we went to that because you were, I believe, at that point, you because you you were you were dating someone. So I was I was out of my off and on dating someone. Yes. Yeah. So I was I yeah. was off at that point. But we went to that. What was that? Pat Oswalt thing. We did. Yeah, and that was that yeah because I remember when that thing came. I and then. As a, I, then I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I have so no like, idea what happened like, after that. Because like, oh, because I got we an invite. We sort of dated. Yes, we sort of dated, and that was the thing. That was the the thing that had come out of that was yeah. that because the reason I bring that all up too is because you're talking about these relationships that you had. That's why I asked you if you still were in contact with. Uh -huh. it, yeah. Because you and I have maintained a pretty good. It was like three months, or whatever it was. Too, yeah, but we it maintained was so a great, short. We maintained a great relationship. Have you always done that? Because I can and can't sometimes. Depends. If you're still in love with someone, right. 
it's very hard it to, hard. to be it's friends, hard. Right. especially if they're not in love with you. Right. That's when it's hard. If you're both still in love with each other and you just need time and things got complicated and you just see, sort of need to take a break, but you, you see yourselves coming back together at some point, it's easy to be friends. It's it, easy to stay sexual friends too, I think. Yeah. Um, it depends on how it is. It's, because I remember, because I remember the conversation uh, when we were on the phone and it was like, you know, again, it was a fun time. We had, yeah. We had, and I said to you, I, and it's something you said to me that always that stood out. There was two things you said to me, which was funny. Oh, I don't know if you remember this. The first thing was when you were telling me about the, the late, great Peter O'Toole. Yes. And you and it was like, it was it was the first time we'd gone out or something too. And, I, and you said to me, you're like, you know, Peter O'Toole said, uh, never date a fan. And I said yes. to you, I said, I just canceled my uh, my my subscription to uh, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> uh, but, which is funny. But the, no, the other thing that I always remember that you said to me was we were on the phone and I said, look, it's cool. I understand. Um, go do your thing. It, we'll come back. We'll be friends. And you're like, thank you for being mature. Because like, you weren't expecting it or something? No, I wasn't. Yeah. You know, it's um, I have maintained uh, friendships with, with most of the people that I've dated. You know, I, one of my best friends is my ex that I was with for 10 years. Like, right. you know, we share dogs. Like, he comes when I need someone to help me with construction at my house. Like, I know his girlfriend. Like, you know, I, I can't say that I would go on vacation with yeah. me and his girlfriend. That might be a little awkward. Can I say his name? Is Scott? Yes. Yeah, because, yeah. because the reason I asked yeah. that, because that was such an on and off relationship throughout so long. Because, like, like yeah. I said, another reason why it's all going to tie into each other. Because mm -hmm. When I met you, mm -hmm. you were dating him. Then you weren't. But then we were on a break. Had nothing to do with me, but you mm -hmm. were on a break. And then after, I remember right afterwards, you were dating him again. Yeah. And then you and I became really better friends. We started like having lunch yeah. dates and, and hanging out. And then I remember it's like you were with somebody else. Yeah. And then Scott came back. <laughs> then you were engaged to Scott. It was like this. It was like this soap opera. This crazy. It was. But this crazy soap opera. But, but how does that work then? It doesn't matter who it is. Mm. Whether it's Lou, Frank, John, yeah. Sam. And Scott's back in the picture. Yeah. Does that cause a problem sometimes? No, not Never. at all. Okay, cool. L life is complicated. Yeah. You know, uh, the longer I live, the more I realize that there are no rules. You can't judge your life by someone else's. Um, and you only can do your best and try and be as honest as you can with not only with the people you have in your life, but with yourself. Yeah. You know, sometimes some of the, some of the, best lessons we can learn and the best teaching moments are when we're heartbroken and and there are moments to learn things about ourselves in everyday life yeah. and you know I, I don't there are no rules to love like you know scott and i went back and forth so many times because i loved him you can't right. help who you fall in love with you know um to be on the battlefield i mean you really are it's like it's you are through wars. Yeah. and you sort of like go towards happiness go away from pain right. you know like it's it's um things are complicated and and life is complicated. Long distance relationships are incredibly difficult. Yeah. It is really really difficult to look to your left figuratively yeah. speaking and want the person that you're in love with to be next to you all the time. But you know, it's it's we're in a business where we travel all the time. Okay. Um and um you do the best you can. Yeah. That's all. That's fair. I mean, that's yeah. a and that's a very mature way of th look. It comes all the way comes back, and I think that that's where, like you said, as you go through these relationships and you understand these things. But it's also what you've always had, and what I've always admired about you is like your your inner strength and the things that you want to do. And that personal goal that you said that you had at seventeen years old is that mm. you carried that over, and you still obviously have that today. Because I want to jump into just what you've accomplished in your career and things that mm. you're doing now and things that let's let's talk about now because that's why you're here today. I mean, I mean well, you're here today because we haven't seen you. <laughs> We're here today because this is in lieu of a lunch date. This is in lieu of a lunch date. So, <laughs> hey, you want to get food? No, just sit, sit with me in, my, in, my, in the box of a studio. Let's sit talk, with no. me and your million friends. That's right. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's have just, a conversation. Let's just talk. Um, no, but uh, the... There's something that you – tell me about your project that you're working on because I know you're probably very passionate about it. You're you, – the second – that was another cool thing that when, when you told me about it, I was like, we got to talk about this. we got to figure this out because I knew – I could hear it in your voice how excited yeah. you were. Tell me about it. So um, the new project is called Another Life. Yep. It's at Netflix. It's sort of my first foray back into real sci-fi. Yep. I don't consider Riddick to be sci-fi, more fantasy. Um, and um, it's um, – I'm really excited. I'm a producer on it, cool. which is uh, very interesting for me to mm -hmm. sort of be a fly on the wall. I'm learning so many things as a producer that I wish I'd known as an actor 15 years ago. Right. Um, people used to always say things like, 
they want you to be good when you come in a room. Like every single person wants you to be the one that's going to book the job. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, whatever. They have preconceived ideas of you and all of these things. And it's actually the truth. I was just in a casting session and every single person that walks in a room, you want them You're rooting to... rooting for them. You yeah. are. You yeah. want them to blow the last person out of the water. Right. Because Especially with a particular look because yes. that person might have such a great look and it doesn't hit you. Like, yes. Ah. Right, right, and right. it's... um. I just, it, it's been such a fulfilling experience to be able to sort of like um, see it from a different point of view. Um, but I, so I play the commander of a ship called the Silveri. Okay. Um, and it's a young crew. My my character uh, was, a, was a teaching instructor. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> an artifact lands on Earth. Okay. And they basically send a crew into space to figure out the origin and whether or not it's it's um, a threat to the people of Earth. <clears throat> um, my character sort of gets stuck leading these children. Oh wow! Um, <clears throat> and, how, and how did this project come your way? Did you did you find this? No, I did not. Okay. So so um, I had created a project uh, with a friend of mine about ten years ago okay. um, called Rain. Okay. Um, my friend Scully um, passed away. Oh wow. And so I sort of like shelved that project. And then a few years later, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this. I'm going to take it and and in his honor, let's just keep going, you know. Um, brought on a producer and we had just finished pitching everyone and he passed away. Um, and How did he pass? Can I he had a heart attack. Oh, so yeah. Scully had an aneurysm. Okay. Um, and then um, um, the producer had a, had a heart attack. And, oh, yeah. and um, there was just a lot of... Um, it was done. Yeah. The project was done. You like it, it yeah. just, I, in my mind, I was just like, you know what? I want to remember these men because they were such beautiful people. I don't, I don't want this project. I just, I'm done. Yeah. Like it was just too much. You Didn't know. Didn't feel right anymore. It did not feel right anymore yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, and um, um, so then, uh, an executive at Netflix sort of called and was like, listen, you know, I know you. I know you were pitching this sci-fi project. What do you think of this? And my manager and I were like, I love it. So. He brought me on board and attached me to it. I was the first person attached to it. And then they went out and found producers and um, a writer. And, yeah. and so it was all very much just me and an idea. And when is it? So what's, what's, where are we at right now with it? So we start filming in four weeks. Okay. Um, because it, you walked in here today and I asked you if, if you wanted LaCroix <laughs> and you said and you said well I just had one but because I'm not drinking anymore and I said, w I said what? I know I said where did that go? I know I do love my wine you love your wine I, I was going to say I do no love wine. my wine yeah. no wine um, you can't do it no it's sort of the, the fastest way for the body to sort of shrink up yeah right. um, I am um, I have an aesthetic in my mind of what I want Nico to look like okay. um, and um, um, they go into cryo <clears throat> yeah. And they come out of cryo and they drink this rehydration drink. And in my mind, I went, oh, okay, so whilst in cryo, they're dehydrated, um, but they're sustained because our cryo is not, visually, it's not a full, you're not fully into it because you're only being kept under for six months to a year. There's, right. It's not 20 years. So in my mind, these characters are being kept alive with minimal amount of, of nutrients and fluids. And, and so I wanted Nico to come out of cryo and look like a fucking badass yeah. and just be ripped and like, just sort yeah. of like so Ripley style. Um, yeah, and yeah. so the fastest way to do that is to like cut out alcohol and call my trainer Steve. So it's any, been working. Anyone yeah. want to train their body? Follow Steve Zim on on. Uh, go look him up. He's right. amazing. He, but you're um, not going to get the tan unless you. I guess <laughs> I a lucky walking dog. The dogs. tan. Yeah, yeah, you need to either you know move to California or right. go get spray tan. Don't lay in a tanning bed. It's so bad for you. It's really bad. For Don't you, lay but, out. People. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. but um, okay, cool. So you got so then. How excited are you to be, to be back in this kind of foray? I'm excited. I'm yeah. nervous. Yeah. You know, I think that um, I never dreamed that a sci-fi show would sort of like give me the career that it has, um, but it did. And it has a, a, a phenomenally loyal fan base. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to do is disappoint them right. and let them down. So it's a daunting thing to sort of go, okay, so I know you guys know me from this. Um, I'm going to try it again. Right. 
please trust it, me this time it, on this, you know this different it's way. gonna yeah. be different yeah um you know the goal is not to just create Battlestar Galactica I, I promise you I will not be Starbuck again right. is she, she very different from Starbuck or similar? she is okay. there is a Starbuck-esque character on the ship but okay. it's, it's not, not me that's cool no it's absolutely not me who's um so who, do we know can you say are there other cat who's cast there are cast members cast but they it hasn't been announced okay. so um the person playing my husband, I'm really excited about. Um, cool. He's he's pretty exciting. Okay. Will, um, we, will we know him? You will know him. Okay. Um, they have not cast my AI partner in crime yet, okay. um, which is sort of um, been someone. I, I feel like every single person has been on the list and just hasn't worked. Yeah, it sure um, sounds cool. Man. And yeah. then we've got like nine characters in age, you know, from 19 to 34 on the ship, and it's like. There's nine of them. Right. There's a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and um, so I think we've cast one, two, three, four, five so far. Yeah, I can see your eyes lighting up as you talk about it. It's pretty because cool. Because so, it's so funny because they, they they brought these. We had a casting session on Friday, and yeah. they, they brought these a bunch of women in for mm-hmm. about four different roles. And um, they brought this... I call her a little girl, but she's she's. They brought this young woman in who's 24 okay. for one role, and she read it, and it was just it was um, obvious to me that she was incredibly talented, yeah. just not right for that. Right. Um, and then the next woman came in who, you know, seven years older than this one, and just was the role. I mean, like it was so obvious that she was the choice. Mm-hmm. That everyone in the room was sort of like, Ugh. Right, right. <laughs> it was so obvious. She provided so much um, that Mike, that Nico needed opposite her. It was just, it was so beautiful yeah. to you see were reading this with, moment. You were reading with I them. Was, I was reading okay. with them, and and it was just this moment where I was like, immediately inspired yeah. by her performance because I knew how it would affect Nico's performance. Um, and then after we sort of talked about that in the room, we realized that the. The first actress was actually right for another character, mm. and we just—it was like, why didn't why didn't we see that to begin with? They're both series regulars; they're just different roles. Right. Um, and so, I don't know if they're gonna sign on, but we're. But the offers are out there. They, we're going. That's after fantastic. Them, yeah. And the other thing with that, so is it, like you said, two, I have two questions in regards to being a producer here. Mm. So. Um, I know that you've kind of many times you've wanted to develop things and you vote your, your head's always thinking in that space but this is like you're now a producer on a Netflix show and it's coming up is it is there more pressure there do you really enjoy it is it something that you want to do more of uh, in the producing role because you just hearing you talk about it it's like you know obviously you're sitting there reading with these people too but you does it does it that's a good question actually does it change when you're interacting with them and you're reading with them? Yeah. Are you so locked into Nico that you're not thinking about producing stuff? Yeah, you'll talk about it after the scene, but it's got to be in there, right? Like when you get the product you, you, yeah. uh, across from this person. Yeah, it's um, it's funny because it's like Nico to me at this point is she's just there. Yeah. Like I mean, I've been attached to her now for for almost a year, right. and I know her like everything about her. Um, I didn't find her voice until I was in that room, though. Mm. Um, I didn't know what she would sound like. And then I found her in that room, and she's so low. She's like, because uh, I talk up here, yeah. but Nika and Nico's down here. She's like really more like, serious, um, intense. She's really just sort of here, like really intense. And it's funny because then I talk like this, and yeah. everyone's like, but she's um, Nico's just there. She's just a, a much more serious type person, and um, and so I am reading with them. But the entire time I'm reading with them. I'm so disconnected because I'm thinking in the back of my mind, oh my God, we just found that. Right, right. That's 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 what I mean. Right, 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 right. right. It's there. It's, it's right in there. there. Right, 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 right. And you're going, don't let them know. It's sort of like when you go into a house and you don't want to let them know that you love the house and right. you're like, it's all right. You know? Right, right. But in reality, you're like, I'm going to put my chair over there and I'm going to put my this here and oh my God, right. they were going to love it. We're going to love living here. Make yeah. an offer. You're my house. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. it's 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 very similar to that. Yeah. Like, I, you sort of feel like you're like, <clears throat> Thank you so much. That right. was really, thank you so much for coming. It's like on that scene Friday. in any movie, and then the door shuts. It's like, oh my god! 
and then, know, and then right? they keep their head in and you, and you try to play it cool. Because it's so funny. What you want to do is yeah. actually reach across to them and just shake their hand and Give go, congratulations. Hug. Right, right, right. <laughs> you right. got the role. And, now you, and, and that's, I guess, the part of the, the, <laughs> the part of being a producer is now hoping that this person who that you know is yes. that they say yes. Yeah. Um, well, good luck. I hope that they I hope they say yes. Well, we and, got four more characters to find. Yeah, so. And, so you're going back yeah. into another... <clears throat> yeah, I mean... Yeah. Hopefully these these characters get wrapped up, and yeah. we've we've still got five more to find. Like it's it's hard. Well, what about being on set now, when now you have to go in as uh, as Nico as this lead, and then but also knowing now that you're going to be producer, do you worry that people like you know because you there's a thing that you start to have relationships with the with the actors, and you're part mm-hmm. of a, this team, and now you're also part of the production team. Mm-hmm. You're also the producer now too. Is there a worry that you know sometimes the actors will now come to you when there's problems? And you're like, fuck, I just want to like concentrate on being the character. Does that worry come up, or it's like, no, I'm just going to handle it and take it as it comes. It didn't until now. I knew they were going to say that. <laughs> no, I knew you were say that. no. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, um, that was one of the things that I learned from being with Scott for so long, yeah. who was a producer. Um, I learned so much by watching him. Um, mm. I learned so much by watching Greer Shepherd on Longmire, you know, how to be, how to rule with an iron fist, um, but to have people respect you and mm. like you still. Um, you know, I learned how much wasted time is on a set. It, 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 it um, you know, s- since then I've done other projects and you sort of look around and I think people forget how, how blessed we are yeah. to be able to go to work and play a daily yeah. and I think they take it for granted and they don't come to work memorized and they come to work late and they have a bad attitude and and to me that is just like listen you can do that all you want we got cryo tubes you got three backups right so I don't you know yeah. I, you know you don't have to be here right if you don't want to be here I'll go find someone who does and because I want to be here. Right. Like, this is, you know, and, and I will do my best to, to just support everyone and, and do the, make the best show that we possibly can. And do you see that, too, like hearing yourself, too, from where you were um, 10 years ago, like the progression of you, kind of just in, as a person, like goals, understanding of the world, and it, because 17 at 27, and on and on, on, like you start to take these situations, even from talking to you just now in this last, like, half mm. an hour, of what you said when you were – from Scott, from producing, from your ex-boyfriend, from the hockey player, being able to take these situations, understand these, learning from people, yeah, and how different it is like now. Because like, even hearing that with the producing, you're, you're saying to yourself, look, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. I, I want to be this. I want to have this job. And it's not just because you're, you're really setting the stage for the next evolution in your career, though, too, aren't you? A hundred percent. Yeah. You know, I, I – you – you learn so much by the people you allow into your life. Right. Carl is my best friend. Like he is, you know, he is literally my other half. Right. And we, I call him. We talk so much about um, evolution of my career and w- what we're going to do next. And he's such a champion and gives me so much support and so much like you can do this, Katie. Like he's just like just good you know, coach. Yeah. yeah. He's such a good coach and such a good teacher and vice versa. And we we have that in each other and. Um, you just sort of I, – I, I could not have done this 15 years ago. Right. I, I was absolutely not mature enough, nor I was, in a, was I in a place in my life that, that I would have known how to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm a very, very different person than I was, you know, yeah, for how sure. You, how do you get yourself out of a, of a place to where – because myself included, I was at a – I remember being – Doing stand up comedy and thinking, I mean, shit, when I knew I you. I loved know, watching you do stand up. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I well, used to, I mean, uh, very, w- one of my mo- favorite nights actually that I, and I, I, maybe I haven't told you this, but like you had come to the comedy store with yeah, your mom. With my mom. I remember that night because what you did, you said you did something. I don't know if you remember this, but mm. it was really cool. Um, you know, your mom was there and you were there and I wanted to make sure that you weren't like standing around. I got, got you into the store. Yeah. And I was going up, and you stopped me because I was spending time with you. And you're mm-hmm. like, go hang out with the boys. Mm-hmm. Go do your thing. Go on and kick ass. Yeah. That goes back to that encouragement thing that you're talking about, too, being able to root people on and knowing. Because I think sometimes people get too caught up in insecurities. and so We're both in front of the camera. Like we both have insecurities. Yeah, of course. Many times. Everyone does. Because like, And that's kind of where I was going with the beginning of when I was doing stand-up. It was like... 
I would get to – because I, I did well, you know, and I was mm. going up like seven nights a week. I was in two shows, and I knew that I could have kept doing it if I wanted to yeah. do it. And I could have gone on the road. But there was just something – that was nagging at me and there's other things I wanted to do and, and I didn't know if I I'd have a bad set and I'd be like, ah, I'm not sure. And you get all these fucking doubts in your head, yeah. right? But I remember being on the phone with you not too long ago and it was after the whole um, Hateful Eight. Yeah. So can we talk about that situation a little up top? Is it how much, I don't know how much you can talk about it, but. No, I, I just, it was, it was a role I thought I got and I didn't get it. It was just between you and her, right? You never know how much of that is true. But it seemed like that. Um, it seemed, it seemed like I got really close. Right. You, you, cause you went and you, you read with, with, yeah. with Quentin. Regardless, I got really close. You got really close. And, that's the type of thing, and I can, because like I said, with, with stand up, you go up there, it's just, it's you, and if you fuck up, you fuck up, and, and mm-hmm. then you can, but you can have the greatest read in the world, mm-hmm. think you have the thing, mm-hmm. have such a rapport with one of the greatest directors of all time, and that's got to kick you in the fucking ass when it's like, because even though you know that you did it, it has nothing yeah. to do with, and I remember being on the phone with you, and like that, that kind of doubt gets it goes gets in there, and it's like one of those things where, like, oh, I'm not sure, this fucking business, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. but now look. Mm-hmm. And it's one of the, it's, it's just where we are. It's like kind of that progression of just getting over that self doubt. Yeah. You always find yourself where you're supposed to be. Right. I right. mean, you have to, we have to believe that, 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 you know, out of heartache comes growth. And, and that's in everything. That's not just in career. Absolutely yeah. everything you do. You know, it's, it's, um, it's funny. One of the things that, that you said that, that sort of, you know, when I was like, you go do you, Yeah. we have to allow the people that we love, um, um, and our friends, like everyone in our life, we have to allow them to be themselves. Right. We don't have to agree with everything that they do, but we have to support them because that's what love is. Right. You support a person through their challenges, through their growth, through, through the things that they need to do, and the things they need to do may take them away from you. But that's what love is. And, and you have to, and that's what supporting someone is you know right. that's what parents do you know like well it goes a long way i mean yeah. it, it really does because it's like because even, even that scenario i remember breathing easy afterwards mm-hmm. because it was just like you know you have a you do have a responsibility you're sitting there with somebody because you don't have to take care of me well it, it was yeah, that, yeah it was, you know you, it's but as a, it is a responsibility also the person that you're you're seeing is bring their their mother with you and it's like well, shit what do i do here and mm-hmm. like, don't fucking worry go do your shit that's yeah. what you do and that's like that to where that philosophy in life, to yeah. where I do it with my kids, mm-hmm. um, and because it is that, because if it's one more burden, if it's one more thing to worry yeah. about, it's like it, be, yeah. it, it can weigh on it cre- creatively. It can, it, it, like, yeah. it, it is. You're right. It is the definition, I think. Of, we like, cannot put, and I've done this. It's one of the things that I, I'm working so hard on myself to to figure out why I do it and to then not do it. I put so much pressure on myself mm-hmm. to be the best I can be. And what that does is I then put a lot of pressure on the people in my life to yeah. be the, the best they can be. Um, and that's not fair. Yeah, You know, it's they need to do them and and that is the support that they need. They don't need my pressure. Right. Life is hard enough, you know? So what is it, does that cause, like you think that that causes a lot, a lot of, See breakups because, like I said, Scott was over ten some odd years, whatever it was yeah. too, and to start to dissecting that will be here for another five hours. Yeah. Um, but I mean, do you see your, when you're able to catch that? Because a lot of people can't catch that, mm. and and so you're working on yourself, and not just relationships, but in general, to you feel make yourself okay. I know that I do that. I know that I can do that. Like yeah. to where, I, and I've got to take away that pressure, and then, like you said, support, and then that will help me just kind of do me yeah 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 like it, it, yeah you yeah. yeah i mean of course it's sort of one of the first steps in 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 growing as a human being is admitting that you do something wrong right <laughs> you know it's sort of um we're not all perfect we make i make mistakes on a daily yeah. basis but you know um you aren't you don't challenge yourself to grow in moments when you're feeling blissful right you know in those moments you just sort of go life is great yeah. well that's a um, question for you yeah. too you pretty happy right now yeah I, i've got on? a lot of joy in my heart i can tell yeah yeah i can tell I do. yeah it's a lot of things yeah. kind of and you know and working my helps. life is in complete disarray <laughs> it, it is in disarray your life is always, it's in, always disarray. in disarray it's always in disarray but that's, yeah, i think that, but that i think that that i don't think that you'd be able to function 
if your life wasn't in disarray. I think that you think that you want it to be, uh, but like it's a good thing. I think mm-hmm. it's a good thing because I think it, it kind of makes you, it it puts you in a focus to different because you're always doing a bunch of different shit. You might be yeah. working on this show, but I can't. I mean, the charities and stuff that you do, you do so. You just, yeah. there's so much that you do. Like, do you find yourself sometimes? And I think it's good that um, because you always take care of yourself. You're always in the gym. You're always like. So do you? you look, is there too much? That's what I'm saying. Like, do you put too much on yourself? The things that you're doing, do you ever say, "I got to take a rest"? Yeah, absolutely. Some, I, yeah, sometimes yeah. I do. I just um, had to remove something out of my life that that was just. It was. I looked at my life and I, I looked at where I was, mm-hmm. and I realized there was one thing there that I could remove mm-hmm. to slow my life down. Can you say what it is? No. Okay. Um. And um. And so I did. Good. And. But it was a really hard thing to do. Right. Hardest decision I've ever made in my life. But it was the best decision I ever made, and I knew it as soon as I made it. Because it worked. Because it worked. Yeah. But I also just went, <sighs> Yeah. So you get as soon it. as I said it out loud. And it was a hard thing to say out loud because I've been so vocal about this in my life. Yeah. And, and um, sometimes the hardest thing to realize is that something you – you may have seen in your life or something that you may have wanted doesn't fit anymore. Yeah. You know, life happens, life changes you, and you are a different person today than you were yesterday. Yeah. And we have to ask hard questions to figure out who we want to be tomorrow. Right. You know, there are no certainties in life. So you have to do what's best for you right now, but also know that the decisions you make now will inevitably affect your future. Yeah. But you have to do what's best for you now. It's funny. I, you know, I feel like you've always been like that, and I'll tell you why. I'm glad that we can finally actually talk on the air about everything in general because it allows me to reference things I've never been able to reference before. We were sitting at a. It was, this was, I remember sitting with you at a restaurant one time, and mm. you said to me, "It scared the shit out of me at the time when you said it because I'm like, mm. well, be, watch out for this." You said, "I've always been able to look at a situation and say, okay, if it's not working, I'm out. I'm done." And that has, you just told the story that s- seems to be exactly true yeah. to that. You seem to approach a lot of things that way. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, if it's not working, I'm done. And it's not, and I'm not coming back to it. Yeah. I'm very good at that. Yeah. <laughs> to a fault sometimes? <clears throat> to a fault. But, but um, um, I also truly believe that um, um, love is rare. Yeah. In this world, finding someone that that um, make wrong wrong sentiment. Mm-hmm. We should be whole on our own, but but finding a person who complements your wholeness and allows you to grow and you push them to right. grow, finding that kind of love, Strength. that's rare. Yeah, and I believe that sometimes that takes chances. Right. Um, but. Um, I'm very good at once the ship is sailed, the ship is sailed. Right. Yeah. You don't think it's ever, was it ever like was initially because of a guard, or was it always just like no, it's just philosophy. Um, I've always been um, spiritual yeah. in my life. Um, um, you know, I believe in something greater than myself. Um, I don't um, necessarily know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know I was raised Catholic. I never really fit for me um but i i've always been a very spiritual person and and sort of like you know do unto others as as you would do unto yourself and things like that and sort of you know um do you catch grief for not being catholic anymore because my mom breaks my balls for it all the time no you know my mom my mom a long time ago looked at at the church and and she looked at sort of um the the restrictions that the church put on um, the members mm-hmm. and their followers, <clears throat> and I think that she she realized that the church would shun everyone she loved mm. in principle in practice, right. um, and that she didn't need a building or a church to feel connected to God. And she, my mom feels very connected to God, and she prays all the time, and she is a phenomenal, phenomenally spiritual Christian. Right. 
um, Catholic, whatever you want to call her. She just doesn't follow she, the specific she, rules, so to say? She does not go to church. Right. That's how I am. Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of We went to church every Sunday my yeah. entire life. Um, I think that, you know, my mom looked at her life and went, this doesn't fit for me anymore. Right. doesn't change my belief. doesn't yeah. change my connection and my relationship with God. But it changed her relationship with the church. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the same thing with, with me. I think that I... It's weird because I don't really necessarily know yet. I still, at my age, yeah. still, I don't know what I believe. I know that yeah. I feel connected to certain things. I know that sometimes I feel like there's got to be more than just this because it feels like there's more than just this. But mm. I don't know if I... I don't know. It's like you still you never. Do you ever really figure it out though? I, I don't mean, know. Then you watch know. documentaries about the Paleolithic era, and you're right. like, well, because <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's all that shit, man. I mean, I can watch something on the History Channel. It's like, fucking, maybe aliens do work at McDonald's. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> I know. I, mean, I know. Yeah. yeah, you look at a primate and you go, I see it. I know. It's the tr- I, I was in shit, man. I was in. I just went to. Um, I was flew into Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. We drove to. Idaho, then drove through Yellowstone, mm-hmm. and I just there's I remember just seeing and you know with the kids with the two kids cool. and the wife yeah it was, cool. something, it was it was something that's fun it was it actually was you know the funny thing is did you give them diamond tap and just knock them out didn't need to I oh, thought I, I love that I didn't that's think awesome. I didn't think that the 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 nine month old would be able to handle it yeah she was fine. She was like, I like my car seat. She was fine. She, you know, a couple of times she said, hey, I just took a shit. All right, fine. We'll, we'll fix her up and then she's done. Um, but like, but my, um, but my seven-year-old after a while was like, guys, we've been driving to this park eight hours. I got to pay. Like, like, you know, she's like, she's like, come on. She was starting to get like, you know, I'm sh- It's a long time for a seven-year-old to sit in a yeah, car. Yeah. Did I yeah. say seven and a half? I don't know. She's you, six and a half. Is she six seven, and a half? I'm losing track of this, but she's she's in karate. I was going to say seven and a half. She's, no, she's getting old. No, she's six and a half. It's, it's she's not. so old. I know, right? It's it's insane. We grew up. We, yeah. I mean, I'm still. I, I look and I go, oh my, I'm a dad. Yeah, like, right. Because like again, like it was, it was the thing. Like, I was. That was the thing too. I mean, I'm, I'm making you spill all your guts about everything too. I was a fucking maniac before you, you met me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you know that. Like I was a fucking. Like when I was doing stand up a lot too, like it was a certain things. I was so glad that we didn't get into that many questions that that we didn't get to that point. Well, oh, I would imagine because it was just like it was it was, but it's that it goes it kind of goes back into that conversation of trying to find yourself, you of know. Of course. And it's one of those things, just going up and doing stand up all the time, and it's that it's I knew I was doing good. I knew that I it's that that, that drug of fuck that's working, and then but it's also. What what am I trying to what am I trying to accomplish? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. So it's like, yeah, so much so much sh- shit, and you and you constantly think about it. Do you think about? Do you go back and like think about certain things like that you did in your life? Do you are there still regrets, or it's just like one no. of those? You know, yeah. I don't no, I don't believe in regret. Yeah. No, I I um there are things that I have learned about myself and situations that I wish I had handled differently. Right. But I firmly believe that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. I agree with you. And you're learning the lessons you're supposed to learn in the time that you're supposed to learn them. I've said it on this show to a couple people, and and I've always kind of – it's the philosophy I've kind of had myself. It's like you really can't judge the past if you aren't able to see the future. No. Because you don't know – the worst thing that happened to you in your life, like the Mm -hmm. thing about the worst thing ever that happened to you in your life, you – like you said, you wouldn't be here, plus it then – steers you into busy- like those moments wouldn't have the butterfly effect no i mean you actually have to be thankful for the heartache and the pain in your life right you have to yeah because it 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 firmly plants you where you're at yeah. you know i mean it's it's i wouldn't be who i am if i didn't make all the mistakes that i've made in my life right and i find it so interesting when people are judgmental of a person's mistakes right i find it to be like they've never had any of themselves right well to me it screams an inner anger and frustration sure. when you have to judge another person's growth. Well, it's also like one of these you see it all the time when some when it, it'll, it'll probably happen. It'll probably be in the news by the time we get out of here that the mm. the one particular person calling out whether it's someone who's gay or something, and then it turns out, right. oh, well, look, they just got caught in the bathroom doing something, and it's right. like because they don't they're not strong enough or there's it's this pain or it's it's yeah. not it's never it's the same reason the bullies that bully is because they either they're either right. beat up by their parents or they or something they were bullied it's that thing right yeah. the things we don't like in other people are usually the things we don't like about ourselves right it just you know it's really hard to 
to be hypercritical of yourself to the point where you can sit down and want to really change. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. Most people aren't comfortable sitting down asking questions they don't want the answers to. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, I like myself. Yeah. It's taken me a long time to get to a point where I like myself. Yeah. I love myself. Um, you know, and, and, and it's a lot of hard work and heartache and hurting myself and other people po probably. Right. And, um, not, in, not intentionally, saying, of course not. Right. Yeah. I mean, I haven't gone out and murdered anyone. Right. Thank right. God. You never, but you, you never hurt yourself. No, physically. You're, I have you're never intentionally hurt right. anyone, right. I, you know, but, um, I, I am firmly comfortable in the place that I am in my life yeah. and, and, but it, how'd it, you get there? Like, I yeah. work on myself a lot. Yeah. I ask a lot of questions sometimes. I, you know, I, I practice um, a lot of what could be perceived as Buddhism and, and Taoism, and sort of I read a lot about spirituality and things. And um, I sit in pain. You yeah. know, we we as a society so, try so hard to fill holes because we don't want to feel pain. We don't want to feel loneliness or empty or fear. Or so right. we we supplement it with things, whether they be people or alcohol or shopping or attention or social media or our job, whatever we're doing to fill a void. Um, if you can't, you have to, I find, sit in that sadness, sit in your fear, run toward it in order to understand why that moment or that thing is making you sad or right. upset or fearful or angsty or feeling abandoned or whatever it is. It's the only way to really find out who you are and change. Yeah. You're big on meditation, right? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. That, is, where, is that where a lot of that those questions come from when you're when you're there and you're meditating, or is that just kind of more like what is it just, or is there not a lot of thought inside of it? It's just kind of being. Yeah. So my meditation is for action. Okay. So it's sort of like um, my meditation gets me ready for my day. Okay. But I do practice different forms of meditation, and I do some meditation on intention. I sometimes I, I do a practice where I I like to breathe in other people's struggles, my own struggles, and breathe out um, what could be perceived as the the opposite mm -hmm. of that um, or the solution to that um, as best I can. It just sort of balances yourself in a peaceful place and makes you realize how lucky you are yeah. and, and how many people in the world are sad. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a very interesting time right now in general. Like, it, there are yeah. a lot of sad people and... and and you know it's funny because I also I remember when you were back on um, when, when you were co-hosting the Schmoes with yeah. us too, and you were like I think you were trying to gear up to like ninety thousand followers, or whatever it was, and and at the time we were all everyone was trying to like get up to social media, social media. Um, I hate it now. I hate social media. I fucking hate it I've now. I've just taken a month off. Good for you. I hate it now. And if it wasn't from a promotion, I would have quit. <laughs> Me too. It's like you get like yesterday or whatever, two days ago, I had some, now I have just some random fucking idiot like posting stuff like threatening my kids and doing of all course. this. And it's like, you know, and you've been through this a yeah. billion times over, but it's like, the and then they get mad at you when you block them. Right. What the fuck is wrong with these animals? <laughs> like, like, you have the right to insult me, and I don't get to stand up for myself because there's a blue check next to my damn name. Right. And it's like, and I don't even, I, I have that on Facebook and, and, and Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. Fucking Twitter hates me. They won't, they won't do it. But fuck them. I don't want to be on their platform anyway. <laughs> I know. I hate um, Twitter. <laughs> I just, it's, it's in general. It's like, it's, it's the entitlement. Yeah. I think because it's also one of these things where people think that, A, they know you because yeah. they, watch it it's a it's a, it is an absolute um i think it's a great thing and it is and it is an honor that people do whether they're tuning into this or yeah. they're tuning into your show it's an honor for that they, like you got that that makes you feel good i mean yeah. that's what we do this for but there's also this privileged people think that they have they can say whatever the fuck they want mm -hmm. because it's behind a computer it's yeah. social media it's this thing and it's like they would never do it to your face and if they no. did they get you they get punched in the jaw yeah. Or they fucking, or it would be one of these things where it's like it's a confrontation. There's zero accountability for right. for people's actions, and I think that for some reason people find it so easy to be mean. Yeah. You know, I say this all the time. I don't know why the lasting impression you would ever want to leave of yourself on another human being is cruelty. Right. I, I don't know doesn't what kind back, of person But doesn't that go that back is. to what we did? But that's the yeah. thing. That goes back mm -hmm. to, because I was listening to Joe Rogan um, not too long ago, and he had Jamie Foxx on, right? And, yeah. And what Rogan said, I think, brilliantly, was that 
Think about a, a, a room of 100 people yeah. that you're in, random mm-hmm. entrepreneur. Guarantee that one of those people is an asshole. Oh, yeah. Now, 100,000 people, 200,000 people, think mm-hmm. how many assholes you have. But going back to what you had said before, think about the worst per- thing that could happen to somebody. And they might be common. We don't know what's going on in that person's yes. life. Like the person who's making threats against me and my family, they might be getting burnt with cigarettes at this, right before they do that. They could be getting, you know, like abused. Like So as much yeah. as I want to get offended by it, and I am, I still have to put that in my head. Like that yeah. could be the most damaged individual that we know. And if I learn that person's story, I could actually be heartbroken over it. Yeah. But that person doesn't think that way. No, they don't. And that's what fucking gets me. It does. But we cannot, we cannot like withhold our ability to have compassion and right. humility just because someone else doesn't. I you know, know, but it's tough. It's hard. Yeah. It's absolutely hard when yeah. somebody calls you terrible, terrible, terrible names. Right. I think that it says more about them than it does about you right. when they do that. Um, you know, the thing that that is hard for me about social media, and I just had this conversation with a girlfriend of mine, social media, especially Instagram, um, um, has this weird sort of comparison. And, and, you know, we start to compare our lives with people who travel all the time, right. who seem to live these so f- fantastic lives and, you know, are surrounded by friends and they're always happy and they're this and they're that. And it's, it's like, listen, shot. guys, yeah. I edit my photos 15 times before yeah. I put them out there. Like you're, you know, you're very rarely see, I mean, you are seeing the real me, but you're seeing a facet of me. You're right. seeing a facet of my life that is interesting. Like, you know, you're not seeing the fact that I woke up, walked three dogs, stepped in poop, mowed my lawn, <laughs> showered in cold water because my water heater's not working, came right. here, like haven't eaten because I haven't gone to the grocery store yet today. I mean, like you're not seeing that part of my life when I sit at home and I'm alone for 48 hours straight because right. my they friends- They see this image. They and, do. Right, and they, pro- and they start be- to project. They do, they project and then yeah. it makes them feel less than. Right. Or it makes, you know, I have friends who are gorgeous and successful in this. They have someone they look at whose life looks uh, life looks amazing, right. and they have this envy in comparison. And I, I think it 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 makes people feel like their life is not the best life they could have, right. and that is so sad. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it's it's just a problem in general. I think that also, you know, and I don't want to get too political, but I do mm. think I do think that that things have happened in this country, particular leadership that has not encouraged um, kindness. And I think that that has, and you know, regardless of whether or not you want to, and I'm not talking about, again, left or right. I'm talking about just decent. Everyone. I'm just talking about being a decent human being. There are certain mm-hmm. ways to address people on Twitter, and when certain leadership is doing the opposite of that, it sets a bad example. Yeah. Um, and I think that that has mm-hmm. set, in general, certain motions that have not been good because there are people that will hear me say that and get in an uproar because oh my god uh, yeah. what a liberal I'm not a, I don't give a fuck about left I don't give a shit about right I just care about when when people are talking about there's you should be able to project your thoughts on what mm. you want to do and not be then called something about your appearance or right. something about your anything that's going really go into it about you because I've seen you I've seen you make a stance about something politically mm-hmm. And then people, they don't, they don't come after you with a, with a conversation. Mm-hmm. They attack. Right, because my opinion differs from their opinion. Right. And that's, that's the, the problem with opinions. <laughs> like assholes. <Yeah. laughs> Everyone has one. <laughs> but for some reason now, yeah. um, and this, this has been coming for a while, whatever is the cause of it. Um, I don't disagree with you, though. But um, where... Because your opinion differs from mine, I'm going to scream louder. Right. And I'm going to convince you that you're an idiot. Where, what happened to like, all right, you have a different opinion. So what, I have a different opinion than most of the people that I meet daily. Right. Um, I'm still kind. It's They're still kind to me. Right. Like, you know, I would, I, it's just sort of, I don't know when it became a crime in this country to have a different opinion and just walk away. Right. Yeah, like, I think, so it, well, what? well, what's even crazier about this, and and I've talked about this in depth, so I don't want. It's like, mm. like the, the I don't even. You probably, if you have been paying attention, then I feel I'm sorry. You have to pay attention to it the same way that I am. Um, but if you don't, God bless you. The Star Wars community right now is a disaster. Yeah, it's it's pretty violent, isn't oh, it? Oh, it's just disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting. And I've been, and it's you know, it's something you know how much 
I love Star Wars, I get I'm, I don't want to talk about it much anymore. Yeah, it's I, I don't know much about it. I just know um, how attacked some people have been on social media. Right with Kelly Marie Tran, um, and everything too, right? Which is absolutely fucking horrific that it's, it's people would movies. They're movies. Number one, number two. How dare you? Right. How dare you say some such vile things about anyone right. at any time? Yeah. Like, I, how dare you? Right. Like, those people should be rounded up. It is right. And like, I don't know what. Tossed out. I don't know what. I don't know. But fuck I don't know what. Because but that just makes me not a nice person to think that of that. I know, like, but it goes back. It, 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 I think it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Who knows what those idiots are going through and what it is. But it's just like, yeah, but it is, see how hard it is? To it like, is hard. It's so hard. But anyway. It is uh, hard. It's huh. sort of like, I don't know. You know, yeah. it's, it's, um, that is one of the things is that, you know, usually the people that are the loudest and the angriest on social media or have the loudest opinions are usually the ones in their lives who are the saddest True. and most lost. Well, something that I think. Uh, unless something like happened that I don't know about, something that should make you smile. How's Trisha doing? <laughs> She's good. Good, yeah, because you guys, you guys are tight. Yes. You guys have been friends for a long time. Long time. We were yeah. just on the phone last night for like an hour. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm glad. I mean, because yeah, because you've been, you, you guys have been done a lot of projects together, done like yeah. a lot of things together. Um, what is it about Trisha that you know you just because you guys are like two peas in a pod? Yeah. Because like, what is it about Trisha? Just you guys just kind of get along so well. Um. She's incredibly kind. I yeah. mean, that's one of her best qualities. Um, but she's, um, Trish and I allow each other to sort of be whoever we're going to be, and there's no judgment. Like, and that's sort of what it is with most of our girlfriends yeah. is that, you know, I appreciate her strengths and her challenges and, and her weaknesses, and, and she's just a phenomenal person and makes me laugh. And, we love getting into trouble together yeah. and you know and and um um she was <laughs> she was drinking martinis last night and i was sober Jealous. on the phone and i was like ah! <laughs> any shots she shows up on the show no no there will be no you know it's funny it's we've sort of had this like referendum that there's no Battlestar galactica uh, people on this show because then if there's more than one then it starts to turn into a, yeah. yeah i see and sort of and it's also that thing because we're shooting in vancouver it's so easy right to just go let's cast everyone from Battlestar. right right <laughs> we know they're great right Van um yeah, you, you you spent so much time there huh i know do you have a, you have a place there yet I did. I sold it oh, after Battlestar ended. Okay. I know. Okay. I wish I had it. Yeah, you should get. I mean, you're gonna be there again. I mean, cause if if it's so, we're going into for this is a full season, right? Ten episodes. Uh, ten episodes. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I'm excited. It sounds It'll, really cool. It will be fun. I'm yeah. really excited. Yeah, it sounds great. I mean, and uh, any other voiceover stuff that you were doing too? I know you did. We finished up with the best was with Rebels when you did Rebels and you didn't even know when the fucking thing was coming out. <laughs> the, and that was uh, it was a great it was a great run. Um, it was a lot of fun. Too. You know that you know. I'll get it. Um, it's my. It's telling me to stop eating. Cause is that, stop, <laughs> stop eating. Welcome to my life. What do you mean? Tell you to stop eating? Were you, oh, no, I have to. I have to take my thyroid pill soon, oh, okay. and so it reminds me to stop eating. <laughs> Because they take my thyroid pill in the afternoon. You should change it to where it's just some demon. Stop eating. Right? You know? Could you imagine? Yeah, that's great. Like, that, do that you really violent. need that piece of cake, right. Katie? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll leave it with It'll that. It'll go off again at 3 o'clock. At 3 so. o'clock? Well, yeah. I'll let you get out of here before uh, before that. We'll do, yeah. that. we'll do that. I just want to see. Um, it was good talking to you. It's good I talking mean, to yeah, you. Yeah, it's, been, it's yeah. been a little bit. I mean, there's so much more shit we could talk about. I know. I we could talk it. forever. We should talk more um and we'll do it over lunch but we'll also do it we'll do it in front of in front of people in front of these people yeah in front of these people oh yeah and then it's another thing i told myself because i saw questions come into and you oh yeah what are the questions well you briefly mentioned it on the the live show and i think that we never because we never revealed the actual joke of it till you said in the live show like because you and bonnie are, are have never even met and you guys it was it, completely it was a it, well, where that came from and we can talk about that so we did a q and a I don't know if you, you, you'll remember, you picked the question, so of course you, you should remember it. The Q&A came in because I think that um, there was a picture, I don't know, because Bonnie and, and my wife are like really good friends. Yeah. And she was out there and, I, and some picture came out, so someone said that I that her and I did. I was like, well, that's definitely not, not true. And then there was a question that came out on a Q&A that we did, and it said, 
So did bon- did Christian date Bonnie and Katie? And if so, how did the relationship end or something? And I was yeah, like, yeah. and I go, and I look at you and I go, of course you asked that one because it was it just randomly came in and you're like, well, they want to know. They want to know. And I said, I told what I said was, was vague. I said, uh, I I said I, I all I can tell you is I dated an actress and she had blonde hair. And, and you, you so it was one of us. Like, right, <laughs> so. right, right. But then but then we just started fucking around with it. You and we're like, let's. And then Bonnie's yeah. like, I'm down. Let's I fuck know. around with it. And then. The one thing we've never actually talked about on the air is how that thing, because someone sent it. It's so great. Have you seen the clip of when you guys, so you were hosting for I the first see. hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was hosting for the, you guys are, and this is why you guys are so, you're both great actresses, and had never even met each other. And we were texting each other, and it was like, okay, we're just going to, you look at it, you, she looks at you with this kind of like, gives you like the eyes, you ignore her completely. <laughs> You guys cross over, and it's just like this. It's and and the fucking comments. They were just, it was awesome because I was just. I remember watching because I know I do the schmo down now, yeah. and I do this kind of fabricated drama behind the scenes. And that was like the first one I had ever kind of like really directed between the two. And I remember you texting me like, "Is she cool?" And like, it's, it's I know I felt court. really bad. So every once in a while, yeah. I go really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like I've actually like scarred a person like in a scene. Oh yes. Yeah. And I'm like, are you okay? Yeah, no, 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 and and Bonnie said the same thing. She like, she was cool, right? And then she's like, she because I think Bonnie was listening to that first time. She's like, she might be talking about you. She might be like the sweetest person ever. And I was, I was like, <laughs> yeah. So it was, because you guys would get along like legit so well back in the day. You're both, I mean, as far as partying. I have moments though. Yeah. Like I have moments. I I especially when I do podcasts. There are yeah. moments when I. We all have different sides of ourselves. They're all you know um, a part of who we are. But so, it, sometimes different. You know, people bring out different sides of you. Yeah. I'm really good friends with Michael Rosenbaum, and yeah. I, I did his podcast, and really great podcast. But I, for whatever reason, what I was going through in my life at the time, I swore like every other word. Right. I mean, it was constant. And I had my manager listen to it, and I said, I've never actually heard myself swear that much like i'm actually slightly embarrassed by oh, that wow. oh i was i was okay. a little like oh gosh no that's not a good look yeah. and i called why do you think it was why do i think that i swore so yeah. much mm, i don't know yeah. i don't know i just think that it was i think that at that point i think i was going through something that i wasn't dealing with and i might have just had like a touch of anger that i probably uh, was wasn't this the thing that you cut out that you were talking about yeah yeah, yeah. so um and um so I had to. I called Rosie, and I was yeah. like, "Listen, I don't, I don't want to publicize that, and I'm so sorry." But I said, "I have a, I have a young fan base. Yeah. I have a fan base because of, because of the Flash, um, and then a young fan base because of Battlestar now." Right. And I felt so bad, but I was like, "Whole episode, the whole episode." Out. Oh wow! No, they, it came out. Oh, it did. But I didn't talk about it on Twitter or I see. Instagram. I see. You just didn't promote it. I just didn't promote it, Got it. because I didn't want people to. I wasn't proud of myself, yeah. you know, and like so we all have days That's where yeah. we, you know, and I, but I felt so bad for Rosie. I was like, have right. me come back on, and I pro- I won't swear, right? <laughs> and yeah. I'll publicize it, and I felt so bad, and he was so understanding, but he was like, you know, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the, the, it yeah. happens, and, yeah. But at least you, like you said, at least you guys have that kind of relationship also yeah. to where you can call him and you can say, dude, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, just for this time, yeah, yeah. And you don't promote it. I mean, look, it's better than honestly. I've had people do a whole full show and then like I had I, there was this thing that I did on this show and somebody and I asked I always ask somebody right before I said, is there anything you do yeah. want to talk about don't want to talk about yeah and we had that conversation and then I talked to this person about something and it was like a 20 minute conversation yeah and then they were like hey can you cut it out of the show yeah I don't ever want to be the dick that says no because you were nice enough to come on the show you yeah. were nice enough to have this conversation but it's like that's why I said you know this is like perfect example i like i said to you just five minutes ago you want to talk about something You're like no mm-hmm. we moved on that to me is better than talking about it for 20 minutes and then say hey can you cut it out i'll do it but it's but it's but again better for you that you didn't cut it out you just didn't promote it which is which is fine yeah and it's because it's it's i think that and talking about those moments where we learn something about ourselves yeah. like you know that was a side of myself or something that I just sort of like, wow, I don't necessarily want that version of myself out in the world. Yeah. You know, like, because it's not me. I I don't swear that much in my regular life. Like, so it was just like, there was just, for some reason, it was just every other word was, was, 
You was know? it was Fuck. it also because of Ro- uh, Rosenbaum? Because you, you guys had that maybe because Rosie rapport? and I have known each other for so long. Yeah. Rosie, the first job I ever booked when I moved to Los Angeles yeah. was Zoe Duncan, Jack and Jane, oh, working really? with Rosie. So oh, I've wow. known okay. him for twenty years. Okay, yeah, cool. um, yeah. Well, all right. So t- two more things before we get out of here. Yeah. I'm going to give you something fun to do at the end, but in the beginning, the first thing I want to talk about the Flash. Oh um, yeah. When you got the Flash. Yeah. Um, were you? Did you work with Kevin Smith? Did I didn't. Oh, and okay. I, 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 but I did get to meet him at the Los Angeles Comic Con, oh, and I was, and I he was love. In yesterday. I love him. Yeah. I was so he's disappointed, coolest, but yeah. yeah, he's like talk about shrivel up like supermodel. I know it's cool. funny. Well, he came in here and I asked him because we were talking because he wants to do he wants to do the showdown. And yeah. Yeah, he wants to do it, and I was talking to him for a little bit, and we talked. You know, we talked Star Wars for a mm-hmm. while, but um, and I asked him first thing I asked him was you know how he was doing, make sure it's okay, and he said he's doing really well, and yeah. I love that dude, man. I love Kevin. Such Smith. a beautiful soul. He really is. He's just a kind dude. Going back to that word yeah. again, kind dude, will, will, super fanboy, but like in, in, in the in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and he he just he'll give you the best of the conversation like, yeah. right there, and. Again, going throwing back another Rogan reference. He, him, and Joe had a great conversation. If you haven't seen it, treat yourself. Yeah. It's, oh, it's so good. They they talk about dogs, and I know how much of an animal. Yeah. Like, oh, it'll, it'll it'll get you. It'll, yeah. Oh, it'll get you. But um, but anyway, so um, and I thought about you because when he was talking about Flash for a little bit, and so tell me about the the tell me about Flash. Mm. Um, what was your experience like? Is it something that you? Uh, is it one of the jobs that you'll take with you? Like, how was it? Yeah, I, I, I'll take it with me just because it's the most fun I've ever had on set. Really? Um, well, well, with the character. Yeah, okay. Um, Why is that? Because um, she was insane. Yeah. You know, they let me do whatever I wanted to do, which, you know, when they, I was like, I want to do a British accent. And they were like, which one? And I said, no, no, all of them. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> just change it up. All yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. all times. Yeah. I just, I want her to be insane. And they were like, why? And I was like, well, because I think she's from like Clearwater, Florida. Okay. But she's crazy. Like, she's She's got a couple screw lo- screws loose, right. and and so I wanted her. My goal was for her to just be fun to watch. That's it. That's the only thing I wanted was for her to be fun to watch. And James Callis's daughter Kiki, mm-hmm. who's British, mind you, runs around and does her dialogue all over the house. She's like nine. She's obsessed with Amunet, and I think that's absolutely yeah. that's who I made that character for. Not for a you know thirty five year old man right. who who did it for you. lives in yeah, Britain yeah, and, and thinks my accent yeah. sucks. Right, right, right. Like I don't care. Yeah, I didn't right. make it for you. Right, right. Well, that's <laughs> like all. I did it because it was fun, and you know Keeks loves it. Right. Was that some of the and that's where some of the stupid comments we were talking about before with social media. Who cares? It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. Do you even bother with like even when it, when the shit comes out? Do you read comments anymore? I don't want to get into another conversation about social media, but just do you do you read comments? Um, on, not on Twitter anymore. Yeah. No, because Twitter Stay to me is it. is um, so negative. Yeah, true. Um, we we yeah, we have a show here that on uh, it's called Afterthoughts, and these mm-hmm. uh, two guys who were fans mm-hmm. of the, everything Collider, they basically they kind of break down everything going on in the world of Collider, right? Yeah. It's like, and they say it to me every single time they go. Just stay away from the comments. Your yeah. your life will be that much easier because it's a different time that we're in. But um, yeah. but I'm with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay off. I'm gonna do that. I don't even watch the news anymore. It's too tough. No, I I yeah. give myself an hour a day. Yeah. Um, and I read I read like newspapers. Right. Get caught um, up. So in what's I, going I read on. the newspapers, but when I read it, and I read bipartisan, yeah. so I read both sides of the aisle. I form my own opinion. I don't need to have people yelling at me on TV anymore right. telling me what I should and shouldn't think. It's um, on either side. Right. It's gotten so vile. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, there are two, it's, it's hard. Two clear sides. It's yeah. never long like, well, maybe no. yeah, it's just two clear sides. Uh, I do. I yeah. do. Li- I do like me some MSNBC sometimes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean. I turn it on. Yeah. I mean, it's. it's Is it Rachel Maddow? Is that her name? Rachel, Rachel? Maddow, yeah. Yeah, she's yeah. phenomenal. She's so, she's so funny. Yeah. And so interesting and she, the way she delivers the news. I remember she took news. over for Oberman. I remember back in the day. Yeah. Um, all right, so I want to give you a chance to do something, too. And this is something I'm going to start moving to a few different guests. Yes. Guests I have better better relationships with, too. <laughs> because I think that it's always, I always, again, I'm humbled when people come in here and open themselves up. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about things, too. And because I've known you for so long, I, for the last, like, well, it depends on how long it goes. Two to five minutes, right? Mm. I want to give you a chance to interview me. I want to give you a chance. You can ask me and things that you might know, not know about me. I'm things so that, bad at this. You, you're not though, because like. So let me ask you a question. If we were sitting down 
anything, and that there was something that like you knew nothing about me. You, there's cer- certain things that you do know about me. Mm-hmm. I asked you because here's the things I've known you for ten years now, and there were things that I learned about you today. I knew things that I spawned off of like conversations that we had, and again, that's why I was able to bring up the shit that we never talked about in the air before because it's another con- there's another story I definitely want to tell. And it's it's the best story, but it's like I don't know. It's the it's the it's the, the no. It's that's the, the party story, not that story. <laughs> <laughs> I was not, like, not that story. Christian. Not that story. The party story. Which party story? The, I don't remember. The, 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 I just I'll just start it with the fact that it was like it was Naveed's birthday party. And, oh my god. And it was just that. It's just such a funny. It's just you. It's, I won't tell the whole story, but it's just, it's just you. It's just like when it was just funny how we started off the night where just like we're like because nobody knew anything, mm-hmm. and it was just, and you were just like you were there with like I don't know if it was your manager or whoever you were with. Yeah. I don't I don't remember. And you're just like we got there together, and you're like we should do our own thing. And like cool, and it some, it was just the way that it ended with it was it was hysterical. Well, you know how much it just it, if you knew kind of what Katie's the type of person. What I will say about you is that you're just like you light up a room. Oh, you, light, you light up a room. You do it. You have this kind of big, huge personality, but it is that definite. It, it's everything you talked about here today. It's that kindness that you have mm-hmm. there too. It's that challenge. I know that you beat yourself up sometimes. I do it too. I know that there's always these constant kind of challenges in your life. But I'm glad that like the evolution of the things that you're going through because it's as your friend. It's 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 fantastic to see. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that you're you're doing it. I'm fucking so. It's not to be condescending. I'm so proud of you that you're that you're producing because it's oh, something you. you're built to do and you wanted to do it. So yeah. that's what I'm talking about when I can as far as the interview thing goes too. Like I learned a lot about you mm-hmm. right, today and I've known you for 10 years. So mm-hmm. is and if there isn't then there isn't. But I want to give everyone I'm going to always give guests a chance. You can ask me whatever the fuck you want to ask me. And I'm uh, you were under the microscope for fucking an hour. So here I am. Um all right. Um, oh, the gloves are coming off. Like, all right. No. All right. No, it's not that bad. Um, let's see. Um, um, okay. Was When you worked at Silver, yeah. was that purely just to pay the bills? Or did you actually see yourself like moving up the ranks at that company? Yeah, it's a great question, actually. I um, So... I, when I was working at Joel Silver's company, the intent, I was doing stand-up, right? So I actually, the first thing is that I was, my ex-girlfriend that I was with for a while, I was doing stand-up and she wasn't like the real supportive mm-hmm. kind. And it was just like, when are you getting a real job? When are you going to do this? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm the regular at the comedy store. I'm doing people like, yeah, but that doesn't pay anything. When are you going to, like, not everybody can be on TV. And I'm like, she's like, you like movies. Why don't you get involved with movies? And I was like, well, all right, well, I'll see what I do. So I started interning somewhere. And then the internship, actually, because I'm pretty good in a room, mm-hmm. and I was interning. I got myself a job at like Alcon Entertainment doing bullshit, right? Yeah. And then I, tr- tr- I saw that Silver was hiring. Yeah. And I turned that into, you know, this was got David Gambino and um, Eric Olson. I was in the room with them. I got myself the job as, just, as their assistant at first, and then I turned that into kind of creative position. Mm-hmm. And, I brought in a project, I brought in stuff, and that's when, when you met me, it was more of like, I was moving up the ranks, I just kind of set up the He-Man thing there, and mm-hmm. and so they offered me kind of creative executive, and the, the intent was to start producing stuff. How long were you these. there? About three years. Wow, that's and, quick ascension. Yeah, and so I was trying to like, you know, cr- like do stuff there, developing projects, and I was digging it, but I was missing something. Mm-hmm. And right when you met me, um, I remember I had just set up the He-Man thing and the mm-hmm. Wonder Woman thing, and that's yeah. when the fucker, the one guy stole the, the thing right. from me. Um, but at that point, I wanted to produce my own television show, mm-hmm. the thing that I wrote. Yeah. And I also wanted to get back into stand-up full-time, and I couldn't do it there. So I knew that I didn't want to work for anybody. Yeah. Like, it's different. Like, you know, here is it, it's it's different working at Collider because, like, Mark Fernandez, like, lets me do my thing and I can create right. and I can do it. It's like I'm not, I'm not like, it's not like I was working at The Bachelor. That, that was to pay the bills. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. So the answer to your question, it wasn't it wasn't a matter of um, just paying the bills. It mm. was learning. I learned, I mean, look, I met you. I mm. met I met David Gambino. I met Navi. I met, Navi, I, met yeah. I met so many people that I still have great relationships with. I saw Navid actually like six months ago. Carl oh, yeah. and I, we were at dinner. Oh, yeah. good. He's yeah, the yeah, yeah. He's, He's the lovely. Butt. Yeah. Um, you guys had a script there, I remember. Yeah. Um, so there's about five scripts that I've kept in my life yeah. that have never been made. 
that I, you get scripts sent to you a lot, but if you're taking a general meeting yep. or something, yep. like they want you to read this, you know, for whatever. And then for whatever reason, the script never becomes anything. Altered Carbon was yep. one of them. Yeah, I right, remember right. reading that script as a movie and being like, fuck, I love that. So funny. We gave it to you, I think. Right? It was so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's another one you guys had called God is a Bullet. Okay, I don't remember that oh, one. Oh, my yeah. God. I still have this script. Really? I absolutely Where is it? What's going on it. with it? Nothing. I have no idea. I Get absolutely love it. I should. So now you're, big, you're a fucking big producer now. And then there's another one I'm called more um, than you know. Paper Wings that was amazing. Um, that was about a country singer and a rodeo cowboy, um, but very sort of like a star is born. Oh, okay. Um, and it went through different, like Will Smith's company had it at one point, then Tom Cruise had it. Then like it was, it was all the, it was a very interesting thing. I, I fought for that forever. Okay. Um, yeah, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, so I, I, I'm not sure. You know, Ethan Irwin, who yeah. is now, he's like now the, um, he's now the vice president of Joel's co- company now. But Dark Horse isn't there anymore. No, it's not Dark Horse anymore. It's just Silver Pictures. Yeah. And so they're, but they're out in like Santa Monica. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, and they, huh. well, they just had that whole thing happen with Scarlett Johansson. Yes. Yeah, they had that whole project. So, yes. Um, you know, things happen, but. Interesting. Yeah. Um. Okay. And challenge me, Sackoff. I'm here. I'm, I, I, I know I, I it's, hard. it's hard. It's yeah. hard. It's um, hard. Um, okay. What parts of fatherhood do you not like? Great question. Um, the worry. Mm-hmm. I think the worry is the biggest thing too. It's like, you know, you, these are, these are, these are two humans that you have to, like you were responsible for now too. Yeah. I'm, I'm responsible for three people and you know, four, including myself. And it's like they, um, yeah, they're like everything to me. So it's like that. And it's it's the also the part of fatherhood that I'm the future is the future of the of teens is something I'm not gonna love. Um, there are certain things that you know I know. Like I told you, like I was I wasn't I was a fucking maniac, and I don't want them to meet anyone like me. You know, like that, like. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, children have to make mistakes. I know, you but can't I don't, protect them too much. But I don't want them to. I understand. Of course, I still, you've, you got to let it's them. It's harder fall. when they're your children. I know. That's yeah. the thing. So that's whereas that. I'm like, just let them fall, Christian. Right, but that's but it's it's <laughs> it's a, catch it's, them right before they I'm, hit the ground. It's the truth, though. You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong. You got to let them make mistakes. You you do. You can't helicopter mom. No. Yeah. Yeah. Are you glad that women? Are the ones that have the babies after witnessing all of it? One billion percent. Um, <laughs> Do you think that women are stronger than men? Uh, yes. See? There's, there's no doubt about that. I mean, because to know what is, I mean, I don't want, I would never want that to be going on in my body. Like, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. Like, it's like, yeah, with certain people, guys are full of shit. When I could do it. I saw, my wife has done things <laughs> that it's like, she is a miracle worker. Like she, and she, she'll tell me, she's like, you don't know what it's like. And I'm mm. like, I don't. You're do, absolutely right. Do, did you find yourself envious of that initial skin-to-skin bond and breastfeeding? I actually had that. Um, did you? Yeah, no, it was different. Because my, my wife had a um, – it was when both times a little. it was a little tougher. Yeah. First, so like I'm – both kids grabbed them right away. Mm-hmm. So I, I actually had that. So, no, wasn't jealous of it at all, and I, I actually – we work as a pretty good unit, the two of us. So it's like uh, I, I've been, been pretty, pretty lucky. Like mm. I'm pretty lucky. I think that was one of those things. Like again, where um, I don't know, I'm just an honest mood today. Like it's like yeah. so. You, you, and it was like 2007. I think, yeah. I met my wife like I think like five months afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like one of those things too. Like it's a great conversation that we had. Yeah, you know, it's like it's one of those things where you never know what the fuck is going to happen, and it's mm-hmm. like because you meet like uh, my wife is like heaven sent. Yeah, I mean she's heaven sent. It's like she's like this. The, I knew you just know certain things about people. Like mm-hmm. I knew she was going to be like a great mom. Yeah, before like we had kids, I knew she was yeah. going to be a great mom. She has been, so it's like, and you know, like and she's feisty. Yeah, so I can't deal with non feisty. So. No. But um, but anyway, yeah, but that see that's that's what life is, you yeah. know. Like you never know what's around the corner. Right. You so never true. know what's yeah. around the corner. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So, what other questions? Um, do you believe that? <laughs> do you <laughs> like? Do you believe that men should have any control yeah. over women's bodies? <laughs> no, I don't. Um, not at all, <laughs> I don't. I think that it's. Um, 
that is a, I mean, there are circumstances and, you know, with maybe a, a particular, like let's say there's someone who's m mentally, you know, not, not stable or a, an extreme drug addict or something along those, there are circumstances. Of course, every there, situation is different. There are circumstances, but, but, but no, I do not. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that um, the male birth control pill is a good thing? I don't know enough about it. I know. I mean, it's it's. What, give, give me the. What is it? Like, I what? don't know. What is it in women other than it fucks up our bodies too? Right, well, I mean, if it fucks <laughs> it's up, the feisty yeah, any, anything, <laughs> right? Oh, there you go. Anything that fucks up the body. No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, but it's like you know, it's one of those things where it's just like a <laughs> pull out method for a long time. That was very dangerous. Um, but that was, <laughs> listen, <laughs> you can calculate that stuff. There are apps. Yeah. The last I'm you know you, four years you, of my life. Has been... look, I'm not telling you that it's a good thing. I'm just no. telling you it was it was the uh, it was the preferred method for a long time. Of course. Was, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. That's that what it is was. so funny. Yeah. Um, do you? What other good questions? Know, what do you want to know? You want to know anything? Do I want to know anything? Yeah. There is so much that I want to know, so but I needed I needed questions. Well, I needed I mean, like well, I needed time because okay. I'm so bad at this kind of stuff. Well, well so I, if you and I were sitting, this is this is this is a thing. So if you and I were sitting at um, sitting outside eating, uh, are you whatever. and Ellis still friends? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, he's I mean, Ellis friends. He was here. He hosts movie talk every day. Oh, like okay. The, yeah, the thing is, so we just don't. So that's that. That's what I can tell you. Uh, yeah. Schmoes, like, what whatever. happened? So. Uh, you know, it's there's two things. Well, Schmoes is one particular thing. Uh, Collider is the other. Mm -hmm. I got a job kind of full time over here in, in vice president of development and working, doing all these things, working on Schmodown. Um, the live show, I took a break from doing for a little bit, then I kind of came back to it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as fun anymore. Um, it just wasn't as fun anymore. But it was, the, and I, I'm kind of really, again, humbled by the fans because like. I get it every day. Like bring back the live show, bring yeah. back this, bring, this. and there, there's still there's talk about it. Like over here coming back is like Collider Live and doing things of that nature. Right. But it's like, I don't, you know me, I don't want to do a show that I'm not either a putting in a hundred percent, of course, at, or <coughs> it's just not fun. Like this, when you don't have to, there's no, no, yeah. no, and it's like like I have really enjoyed doing like this one on one show because like. This to me, this is what I've always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's always more comfortable. Like, my, my to be honest, and not even because you're sitting there, my two favorite interviews that I've done so far, so far, has been Sinead DeFries and yourself mm. because I know you, and I know it's that easy. yeah, and I know what we can talk about. I know we can. If I if I bring up something you don't like, you can tell me go fuck myself. We move on, or we can get into a conversation we've never had before. Like, mm -hmm. like it's like that to me is more interesting. I think that it's more interesting for the fans. I think that they can then. You know, there's there's certain things that they have never heard me talk about or right. never heard you talk about, and and like that to me is intriguing, and I, that wasn't happening as much on the schmoes, and it's and that's on me yeah. because like I have you got to design it and produce well, it, and, but it's an, it's not that's not what it's about. You know, the schmoes was about movies. You know, it, it wasn't it started about that way, and you know, yeah, it started that way, and I think that that was. Um, I think that's another, Ellis broke it down, I thought, brilliantly on that show, Afterthoughts. Mm -hmm. Like, he talked about it to where when we were doing it, uh, like, our prime, there was no other job except everybody would look forward to Thursday nights yeah. when we'd do the show. Yeah. And then everybody would meet up. It was this clubhouse. We yeah. would do the show, and that was it. Yeah. We're talking movies and doing stuff here every day yeah. from 9 to 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Then you're going to ask somebody, oh, yeah, by the way, your work day is finished now. Now it's 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock. Talk about a lot of the same shit you just talked about. Right. And make it fresh. Yeah. So it did evolve, actually, to um, when it was Schmoes f at, back at the other Collider studio. that yeah. It became a little less than just a movie, which was cool because we could do more stuff like this. Yeah. And it was more goofing around. I like me. I like the games. I like the goofy. I like like I the idea of like shocking Finstock with a dog collar. You know, like like the, I like the crazy shit. You yeah. know, and like that's I want I want to do a show like that. Yeah. And it's still possible, but mm -hmm. like I don't want. I never want. That's why I didn't do stand up anymore because I don't want to half ass it. Well, you constantly evolve, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And what you wanted to, you know, like I said, what you wanted five years ago is different from what you want now because totally. you've, you know, life changes you. Yeah. And then you it want is. different things. Yeah. Hmm. That it? Yeah. All right. I don't know anything else. Look, My brain's not functioning. <laughs> See, because your phone's telling you not to eat. It's true. Uh, that's why. My phone has told me not to eat. It is such a. It's it's not. Yeah. Do you guys have? Do you have any dogs? 
Um, no, you know, I had, you know, Tazzy, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I haven't gotten one. We had one when Vivian, my, my oldest daughter, was born. Mm-hmm. But it just, they, like, well, my, she was getting along with the dog. The dog didn't like her. And, it was, and then my oh. sister-in-law actually took. The dog. Oh, which, good. Which is okay. Great. And she's been with her for years. And okay. we just actually just saw her when I was in. Um, yeah. Wyoming. Is that weird? She, she, Did you sort of feel like you abandoned something? Mm-hmm. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my child. No, I didn't actually because I knew at the time when yeah. it, that it was right. I I almost felt it's funny because I almost felt like we got the dog for my sister in law. Yeah. Like we were holding her. Because I've always had so much, you know. I guess I this is one of something I should work on. So much judgment when people get rid of animals when yeah. they bring a baby into the house. It's sort of like, but so you took on another responsibility and you throw another one away? Like that just it's has fair. always seemed so weird to me, especially when they're dropped off at the the, the pound or whatever. Right. No, um, no, I, that, that, that would, that you was, didn't do that, that, no, though. that was never going to happen because yeah. there was, the conversation was, you know, let's just figure it out. But then it was a matter of, um, and we, and at the time the apartment was small yeah. and it was, and then, um, my sister-in-law came in, yeah. dog responded to her, yeah. it was a tough call, but it was yeah. also my nephew really responded to yeah. her. It's like, this could work. It was never, yeah, it was yeah, never yeah. like we're going to give her away mm-hmm. to anyone else. It was, it was keep her in the, yeah. in the family. And then, yeah, it was, and you know, to be completely honest with you, I didn't bond with the dog the way really? that I thought that I would. Yeah. Um, I, um, I like, not like, I mean, Taz was my boy. Of course. Taz yeah. was like, Taz was like, I don't, I, I haven't connected to humans the way I connected to Taz. I know. And it was like, um, you know, in, in an unfair comparison maybe. Yeah. It was maybe, you know, it was like six months after. There are certain dogs that you sort of like love differently. I know that's like, like for people that say yeah. that they don't love one child more, you may not love one child more. relationship. But you might like one of your children right. more well, than the other but one. It, like well, that. But it's a connection. <laughs> yeah. It's a connection yeah. because like you saw, you know, I was with Taz. Of course. I mean, Taz was like my, Taz. Taz wasn't a dog. He was like a, he was like an right. alien. He was like Meatball. He, I mean, Meatball was like right. a person. He'd right. literally sit in my cast chair and watch me on the monitor. Right. Like when I was at work. Right. Like, it was what? A, they're aliens, those It's pugs. so weird. Yeah, yeah. It um, was like, that's why I have the date that he passed uh, away on my right. arm. When did he pass? What was that? I know that he... August of 2014. Right. August 27th. Right. Yeah. No, I put it there because it was like, it was also the day that I found out I didn't get Hateful Eight. So it was like a double, and the day Longmire I, got you know canceled. And it was like... I remember pfft, that. I remember that. Right. Like and then three. So, and I was like, this is the worst. Right. Day and that's life. fair to be going through to be like, what the hell is happening right now? But it's just like, oh my it, God. And there's always, but it's, it's, it's hard to like clear off the binoculars to see like the horizon. It it's, is. It's hard. It, it absolutely is. Yeah. But I put that date on my arm because I wanted to remember that, you know, this too shall pass. Yeah. And it did. It does. Well, as always, it's it's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, yes, it's been too long. It has been the last too long. Time it was so we're we'll do this again, and then um, we we actually should do a full episode where I'll let you actually you should come in and and grill the shit out and of you. And just grill like, the shit out of you? You should. <laughs> because it goes back to the old days on the on the Schmoes. Because I remember that, that Q&A thing that you did with, with Ellis was you guys, the the Dragon Con and all that stuff. Are you, are yes. you still doing the cons? Are you going to Comic Con? No. No? No. I mean, I do some of them. Yeah. Um, not as much anymore? Not as much. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of them f- next year, yeah. I think. But one not in, San Diego this year. I think I have one in Salt Lake City and one okay. in Edmonton. Are you kind of just taking it easy until you start shooting? Taking it easy yeah. um, for me is um, working out twice a day. Yeah. Um, and but that's like, fun for you, too. No. No? I thought you let you. No. Not um, fun. Too much. Because why? Because the, the program is a lot different now? Like, I mean, I love to go, like, to a spin class. Yeah, or I love to right. go, like, hike a mountain. I don't like this to. This is rigorous lift weights with the guy that made Captain America look okay. like Captain America. <laughs> like, got I got mean, it. like, I've got muscles upon muscles upon muscles, and I'm like... How long have you been doing it? A month now. Okay. So, I mean, I have a six-pack. Women should not you have... cut. <laughs> women yeah. should not have six-packs. Yeah. It's just a very different look for me. Yeah. Like, I, I sent the picture to my mother, and she was like... <laughs> <laughs> do you kick, do you kick, kick a lot of ass in this, in this show? Um... It, it poten- potential okay, for potential. it. Okay. I think that, um, you know, it's funny because they, they write this stuff and then they're like, oh, but it's a girl. So then they cut it out and it's like, guys, I have so much fight training. Right. Like, I could just, like, 
throw an arm bar. I could right. do. Was well, that know, the beauty of being a producer now, where you can you can kind of come in and say, hey, wait a minute, let's let's revisit that. Listen, as much as I'm a producer on yeah. this project, I'm still in these people's minds. I will always just until until you prove yourself, right. you're still just an actress, and you're being placated, right. and that's fine. Um, I'm going to use that to to get some of the things that I want through the door. But I'm very aware of, of where my place is and where they think they want me to stay. Right. Like, that's just, it just is right. what it is. You gotta prove yourself. You gotta prove yourself. Yeah. Got it. Um, and so I, you know, it's, it's um, every little thing is sort of a like, it's a right. give and a take. Like, that's I can't true. fight for too much because I might have to win. <laughs> I might, right. and there might be a battle over here that like needs my attention. Right. You gotta pick, pick your battles. Yeah. Um, okay. So when, it, so do we have a target that when it, when it is, it comes out. We don't know. No. Yet. We shoot it first. Uh, we start out. filming August twentieth okay. in Vancouver. All right. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Lake. I can't wait. Thanks. Um, and then when the show is about to come out, you come back. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. All right. Katie Sackoff. Um, you can follow her at Katie Sackoff on Twitter and Instagram. Be nice, you sons of bitches. I still, uh, I still have two weeks before I'm coming back because I'm oh, okay. taking a break. You're still taking a break. All right. Well, you can still follow her. Maybe taking a and, break and follow her and then be nice. Be good humans. Yeah, because if you're not, I'll just block I'll you. Just block, I just, love blocking people. <laughs> it's my prerogative. It's the best. Like, I, love it. I don't understand people who don't block. It's no, sort of like, why what, would you want someone to scream at you all day long about how big of a whore you are? That's like, what I'm saying. Like, people are FYI, doing it. Like, you don't know me. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> like, saying. Like, the whole point was like, someone was like, oh, what? I just mute them. No, block them. No, block them. You can throw them I out. I want by them the, to know. Right. Throw them out by the seat of their pants. I want them to know that right. their behavior is cruel. Right. Like, they don't take that. No, they don't care. Then they just get mad at you and open a different Twitter account to right. come yell at you from the other side. They're ridiculous. It's so funny. I mean, it's so funny too. Like some of the things that they say, like I wish these people knew me, like really knew me because some of the stuff they say is so absurd. It's like, you know, uh, yeah. if they knew how many people I dated in my life, they'd right. be like, oh, I guess we can't call her a whore, can we? Right. Like, <laughs> And they even they people just say whatever because there's no repercussions no. to them. They don't know what it is. No. To, it's, and again, it's so I'm funny. Gu- guarantee most of those people that have never seen a vagina. All right, with that, <laughs> guys, uh, Katie Sackoff. It was a Thank pleasure you. talking to you it was as nice always. Nice to talk to you as well. And I uh, can't wait to talk to you again. Yes. And guys, we'll talk to you soon. Peace out. That was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.